What's going on, family? What's going on? What's going down? What's shaking? Welcome to another episode of Jonathan Soul. Today, I have an alumnus coming back to the program this evening. Somebody who not only gave us the incredible space opera, Yo Hansi, they also gave us the, uh, the fantasy horror comic book series, The Pact, which is a, a saga about an, a pack of Egyptian werewolves. Not only is he a writer, illustrator, publisher, but he's taught himself how to do 3D animation. Of course, I'm talking about Paul Luis Julie. How you doing, brother? I'm so happy to be back here, man. It's like coming back home, man. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And ladies and gentlemen, you can find all this incredible content at MidasMonkey.com. MidasMonkey, M-O-K-E-E.com. So, Paul, man, what's going on, brother? What's going on with you? Oh, man, this is... Uh, uh, so how does quarantine so, treat you, so man? What's, what's, what's going on? You bouncing off the walls yet or what? <laughs> kind of, kind of, you know, I, I kind of am, you know, because, uh, well, I mean, uh, I mean, thank God we're all safe. You yeah. Know, like we're, we're still, we still haven't gotten infected yet or anything, but mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of crazy, but, you know, still, you know, sharing this much space with each other on a 24 seven basis, yeah. you know, two little kids, but I really got to hand it to my wife. She's the one that's been holding down the fort, you know, with everybody, with the kids, you know, 24 seven and, you know, I'm, but in the meantime, I'm sitting here, you know, uh, in my bedroom slash office now because we had to close it because close down the office because of covid so now i'm um, the office now is just the core of the bedroom okay uh but, but i'm still out here cooking i'm still making stuff you know still working on everything uh you know and as a result of that you know i got so much stuff to finally drop which i'm so happy about you know i mean i just gotta thank everybody for being so patient man everyone's been really patient they, they still haven't let the enthusiasm die down for any of these projects that are coming out that have come out, and uh, I, I definitely can tell them that the, the, it's going to be worth the wait. Like, fantastic, fantastic. Now, the last time we talked, we were anxious to hear about the progress of the Johansi uh, movie yeah. trailer. So can you bring yeah. us up to speed on that? Sure, sure. Yeah, so last time we spoke, I was I was working, I was, I was, I was, I was deep on that. But the interesting thing, uh, um, I think that was, what, like two years ago? Yeah, I think we, so. We spoke, we spoke, yeah, yeah, somewhere around that time. Uh, within that time, I actually had to redo the entire thing because we get because uh, I actually made um, I'd actually started like there's a, there's a whole different trailer in my archives basically, and I when I saw I was like this it's not it's not clicking it wasn't it wasn't working for me so I made the tough decision on restarting everything from scratch like halfway through it. Um, and now, now we're at a point where where I'm in the final the final sh assembling the final shots of the final trailer. Um, and uh, we um, we're, we're hoping that we might be able to drop it at Dragon Con uh, oh. uh, uh, in September. Okay. So we're uh, we're still waiting to hear waiting to hear back from that. Um, but there's a possibility that we might be able to drop it uh, during the uh, the virtual Dragon Con that they're going to be doing uh, in the first week of September. So we're very excited about that. I mean, either, in you know, in either way, we will we'll find some way to. Uh, we want it to be big. We just want you know to make a huge splash. You know, get everybody you know buzz about it and seen about it because um, it's interesting. And this is, speaking of Johansson, they're asking about this. Is that because of COVID? As horrible as you know the obvious is, there has been like a silver lining, and the silver lining is that um, you know the, the 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 movie theaters are closed. You know, Hollywood production is is shut down. So for indies, this is our time. This is okay. a great time because you know everyone's going to streaming now. Mm -hmm. Everyone uh, and and indies have access to streaming. We can put our stuff on streaming networks. Um, everyone's doing everything virtually now. We have the internet, so we can. So basically, it's kind of like a, like a not like a common uh, a common denominator now, like where it's it's uh, it's bringing it's bringing the big giants down to our level, and we're able to compete on that level. Mm -hmm. But the biggest thing is that it's slowing down productions. So other things that would compete, or that or or, or that would be that we would kind of get drowned in the noise with. You know, like IE Black Panther two or something. That's put off for like another year. Mm -hmm. So that's a window for me, you know, to get the stuff out. You know, uh, because you know I don't have Disney's, you know, millions of dollars of marketing and whatnot. But you know, this is great because it allows me to at least get the word out to the same group of people and let them know, hey, now this is not the time. This is no longer the time where we didn't have, you know, like any black superheroes or black futurism or any of that anymore. Now, uh, black people deserve to have an embarrassment of riches. Now we deserve to have. A multitude of things out there from different artists coming out and you're starting to see that now and i'm really like how it's like a call to action to all the all my other colleagues and you know and um 
you know, competitors, if you will, uh, out there too. Uh, this is our time, you know, come out there, put your stuff out and put out there because uh, everyone's just waiting. They're at home. What do they have to do? You know, they're mm -hmm. waiting for this stuff. So it's, it's been a very interesting time. Very interesting That's beautiful, time beautiful. And, and I like the phrase that you use in the embarrassment of riches. And, and along that same line, I would like to say that there's no competition or at least there should be no competition amongst black creators. I agree. Because I agree. not only do we want y'all stuff, the planet wants y'all stuff. That's why even though, you know, Black Panther was really Diet Coke, we still went out there and supported it because we wanted, you know, some type of Coke. No, that's, that's the best way to put it. I ain't gonna lie, Diet Coke, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, uh, it, it, it's, set, it's, it's like... And this may seem weird, but it's almost like the social movement that's happening right now. It kind of gives other people an excuse to be themselves, to be free, right. to put their voices up kind of right. a thing. So, right. Well, th th that's so interesting that you said that because, I mean, we're now what? Like, um, it's been two years since Black Panther came out in 2018, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So two, two years, years since I've seen 20 year old young men crying after watching the trail. I'm like, really, dog? It's, it's that heavy. <laughs> You crying on YouTube, fam? You couldn't edit that out. You know what I mean? That's some moist, man. No, no, no. You, got, you, got, you got some moist brothers out there, man. But, but, but I mean, hey, look. If it gets gets you emotional, I'm not gonna hate on you. That, that's fine. But now, now just that, for full disclosure, I did cry the four times I seen it. And I think I seen it four times in the theater. I did cry every time they broke into Wakanda and they came into that T'Challa theme. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't my fault. It was really dust in the theater. And it just so happened at time with the playing of that theme music when the sister said we was home. I... Yeah, yeah, it got you, it got you, it got yeah, you where you live. Gotcha. I know. But but the the thing with, with Black Panther is very interesting is that um, there's some things I like, there's some things I didn't like, but one thing that cannot be denied is that um, for whatever the agenda is behind, I'm not talking about the agenda behind it or for whatever reason, the studio, I'm not, not talking about any of that. The point of the matter is that whether it was deliberate or not, this really opened the eyes to some black people. It's mm -hmm. so like, wait, it's not ridiculous for us to picture us mm -hmm. in this kind of way, you know, because and that and that makes a world of difference, mm -hmm. regardless of the agenda behind putting the movie out, regardless of what you think of the movie. I know I had my own misgivings about it. There's some things I learned to appreciate over time, some things too. But one thing I can say is that it definitely opened the door in the conversation, particularly amongst people of color, particularly black people. To, un to start giving fant Afro fantasy a chance. Yeah. Because I'll be, I'll be honest, that wasn't there before. You know, I know Black Panther has been there since the 60s or anything, but most of the, um, for the most part, if you were not a black nerd, you didn't know about it. Now it's on the mainstream, you know, like there, because there are plenty of black people that know about, the, know about the Black Panther, but these are the same people that are reading Milestone as well. You know, these, these are the black nerds in the, in the, in the 90s and before that. And that's great. These are guys that are holding that because you know you still had the old heads that were at Black Panther, and they still have people because they say, "Oh, so, so now y'all jumping on Black Panther now." <laughs> Look at us. They say, "What y'all know about Wakanda?" <laughs> but 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 they're still happy because it's like, okay, now we can share this. You know, not, not, you know, like now because it, it, just like before Iron Man came out. I mean, before Iron Man, you know, came out in two thousand eight, you didn't, um, you had to kind of be a comic book nerd to know who Iron Man was, you know, and that's like this whole revolution of superhero movies. So I think that Black Panther did more for the black superhero genre than it did for Afrofuturism. But on the same token, it lit the fire for Afrofuturism, in a sense. Like it, it, it um, because it's because I'm not saying it didn't do a lot. It did a lot, but I feel that with it, it, it completely like you know like flipped the boat when it came to seeing a black superhero in his own movie. We've never seen that before. With Afrofuturism, it's such a big uncharted territory, mm -hmm. and, and like in, in space, that you can't just get that in one movie. You know, like it's kind of like it lit the fire, like it tipped the scales, and now people are like, okay, let's explore this. Let's see what we have over here now. And mm -hmm. now it's and now it's created like an arms race, which which I'm excited about. Like now, um, you have other people, you know, like outside of myself and, and Black Panther that are starting to imagine you know, African space operas or Africans in space. You know, and what does that look like? And, you know, I'm, I'm digging the competition. I really am. I mean, I still want to get myself out there quickly enough so, so I don't get drowned. I don't get buried, okay? Because, uh, you know, I, I, I was here pretty early. But it is very validating to know, yeah. okay, this is, this is actually something that people want to see. And other people want to make it. And to me, that's, that's, the, the, biggest, is, uh, that's the biggest, uh, to me, 
as a fan, because I'm not creating the content like you are. As a fan, what Black Panther did was let us know that there's, what is it, a one point something billion dollars worth of audience out there. That's right. what it like. Black Panther is a, is a B-level character, for real, in, in terms of just comics, for real. Iron Man, B-level, it's not, you know, Captain America's, you know, Spider-Man, you know what I mean? Well, yeah. You know, that kind of, they're, they're higher level characters. How they making multi-million dollar movies out of B-level characters blew my mind. But beyond all of that, it just let us know that not only is there a black nerd, you know, comic book community, but then there's like a, a, another kind of community who likes, you know, fantasy. It just let us know that that, that audience for your kind of content is worldwide. That's, that's what I think, Black Panther. That's the biggest contribution. Well, the, the, the interesting thing, too, now is that um, so back when Black Panther came out, my ideology and my way of looking at things is very different than I see things now. And I've, I've kind of come full circle on certain things, and some things I kind of like did a 180. And one thing I will say now that I didn't feel that, way, that then is that um, like I was much more proprietary over, you know, like the genre of futurism. Like I felt, cause I'd been in it alone for, for a while that I didn't really feel like I'm willing to share that with somebody else, you know, especially if people don't get it right. I'm like, and so I'm really extra critical. I'm like, you know, no, no, that's not how you do it. Like, don't, don't come at, but, but the thing is that as you get a little bit more mature and mm -hmm. older, you start to realize, okay, put down the battle axe, relax, chill. <laughs> okay. And just take focus on on the people right now right what are you seeing in their eyes right now they're just happy to see themselves they're happy to see themselves in a in a futuristic way in a fantasy way they don't care about all those same details that you they will they will mm -hmm. but that's not what's important right now what's important is that they're seeing something that they've been deprived of for 400 years i don't want to start preaching now but i'm just simply saying that that this is it's much bigger than that so when you see mm -hmm. it that way that's why i had to you know i really had to humble myself and realize that you know what? It doesn't matter who's doing certain things. As long as they're still there, I still need quality. I still need people to do things right. Okay. But at the same time, if you're really, your passion really is there for the culture and you really want to empower black people, you really want to, to spark their imagination with, with, uh, with their own culture and not a, another culture has been forced upon them, then, you know, more, more power to you. We're brothers. In that case, we're, we're brothers in arms and sisters in arms. You know, we're, we're doing that. Mm -hmm. And I, so it's interesting when you say, you know, like what you're doing, it's not mine anymore, you know, like, or, or as a matter of fact, it never really was. It, it's, this is, this is um, something that I've been entrusted to for, for the people. And, you know, it's my responsibility to use my talents as a vessel to put it out for them. But once I put it out, it belongs to them. It doesn't belong to me anymore. Just yeah. like the inspiration doesn't belong to me. The inspiration came from our common ancestors mm -hmm. from Africa. Yeah. So, you know, who am I to get, you know, like uh, cocky about that? So mm -hmm. th there's been some humbling involved with it. But I really hope that if there are any other uh, black creators out there that want to create Afro fantasy, not just not just Afro uh, space opera, but Afro fantasy, like you like even the Packery thing like that. You want to do something like that. Just make sure that you are being true to the the authenticity of the culture don't just appropriate things because it seems nice or mix things in a blender. Uh, you know, do your research, okay? Trust me, there is enough wealth in uh, in Black heritage. You even have to go to Africa, just in the diaspora alone. You know, there we have some a lot of badass stuff in our history. Trust me, it's not all just slaves and misery. It's not. We did it. We, we've done some amazing things. We've been here for 400 years. A lot happened. A lot happened within that time. Mm -hmm. I'm not just talking about social media. Even if, if you want, you know, like like warriors and all that. I mean, look at the Maroons in you know in Brazil and in, in Haiti and Colombia. I mean, they developed their own martial arts. I mean, you, you, they, they, these are, they grew their own thriving societies. I mean, there's that's just like the tip of the iceberg. So I want more black people to get out there and realize now that whatever genre you want to do, you can do it and pull from your own from your own culture. There's been this, this misconception, this indoctrination for so many years via white supremacy and systemic racism that we don't have cultures, um, that we don't have a culture to pull from. And eventually they, they loosened up and said, okay, you may have a culture, but it's only surrounding, you know, social injustice or, you know, movies about like, you know, like economic strife and social justice or, or urban problems, but you don't have fantasy. You don't have, 
you know, dramatic martial arts. You don't have romantic dramas. You don't have, you know, all, all the genres of Hollywood has, we don't get that. All right. And if you do, it has to be somehow mixed in to racism. You know, why is it that every part of our story has to deal with racism? Mm-hmm. I mean, we deal with it, but that's not the, that's not the end all be all the black experience. Mm-hmm. You know, like the, 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 like what is the black experience? It should be, it should be a mono, it should, it should be a, a plethora of things. Mm-hmm. It should not just be one thing. There should be a, an endless buffet of things that we call the black experience. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, well, there is. And that's why I have this show to yeah, highlight exactly. people like yourself. And you're not the only one, you know I mean? Exactly. People who are, who are, who are creating that kind of uh, content. Bucket, man. People who are creating that kind of content. I mean, I haven't even touched the fan film piece or the indie film piece, which, you right, know, you're going right. to lead on to in a second. I haven't even touched, you know, I, I try to dabble in sci-fi novels and stuff, but I'm just not as familiar. I wasn't as strong. My game wasn't strong on the sci-fi tip, man. That's too much reading. Right. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's like, I can do 26 pages. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? no, 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 don't, don't worry. The, those yeah. first 26 pages are much harder than your 200th page. Trust me. I can dig it. I can dig it. It's the, fir- the first hump that you get over. But, but I mean, I, I, I can't wait to read your stuff, man. I mean, but, but, but that's what I'm talking about. I'm talking to brothers now that I never even thought. They say, you know, I want to start my own now. I want to do this now. I'm like, go for it. And they come with these great ideas, like I don't even know I could do this. Like, now I know, now I know why you have so much fun with what you're doing, and you're starting to see like this this awakening mm-hmm. going on or, or, like across the board. Mm-hmm. And I love that because I can just kind of you know like fade into yeah. it's the black, yeah. and I can just be and I can now be a spectator. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, I I, I I have my own contribution, I have right. my own stuff out there, but I want it to get lost in this endless sea of like quality black entertainment. That's my dream. It's I don't see. want. I don't. I, I'm not trying to be a black Disney. I'm not trying to mm-hmm. be a black Lucas. I want. I want to be the same quality of that stuff. Yeah. But I want to be shoulder to shoulder with like, like ten ten hundred others. Mm-hmm. You know. That well, that's that's what, that's happening. Trust that's me. When I tell you off mic about the content I was able to see, trust me when I tell you it's happening. That's what. I'm, that's what makes it happen. I don't it's even good. know if you've seen videos on on YouTube about like a tsunami. Like one person looking at the beach and then all of a sudden, oh, 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 you know, they run and then the whole beach is gone in like 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. That's what's happening. That's good. E- that's every good. person that produces one of these is telling me, oh, you know, that's a, that's a fake out. This is really a storyboard for my for the movie I have in my head. I'm yeah. like, word, you know what I mean? And so, and they well, hook up I, with people. I, I'm glad you brought that up because yeah. that, that, that was the whole that was the whole reason why I even got in the comics in the first place. Because okay. I, never got in the, I wanted to make movies. Yep. And I told I was told a story a, a million times, but because uh, um, you know, so just like I said, after I had the idea of you know doing like that mission and all that, and I still do, um, the idea was immediately go straight to film, you know, mm-hmm. do movies, like because because that, that that's my passion. That's what I studied. And when I get to, when I when I came to America for college, and I realized, man. I'm going to have to like climb a really tall ladder, you know, eat a lot of shit uh, in Hollywood before I even can get like even close to my movie made. And even then I'm going to have to compromise a lot. And it's going to be someone else's movie, not mine. Your Hansi would have to be a drug inter- dealer. That did not interest me at all. Wait, what? <laughs> Your Hansi would have had to been a drug dealer. <laughs> yeah, a drug dealer. He, 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 he would have been lighter than the paper bag. <laughs> he would have straight hair. But like a blonde girlfriend. I don't know. Yo, like, man. <laughs> let's get this space rock. <laughs> <laughs> but you decided to do it on your own. So let's, let's um, I just want to, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I decided to do it on my own and, and, um, and, and and that was when it hit me. I said, "Okay, I don't have money. What 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 what, what? you have to tell yourself? What what do you have? What do you not have? What mm-hmm. can you do? What can you not do? Right? Don't be afraid if the list of things you can't do is larger than the list you do. Just do it. Trust me. Because here's the exercise that came out of that. There was a lot of stuff that I couldn't do. I I I didn't have any money. I didn't have any 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 people I knew in the industry. I could not. It was it was apparent I could not make a movie. But what could I do? I say, well, I know how to draw." I had know how to write. I have the ideas. So I taught myself how to make a comic book. And I said, I'll make the comic book and then I'll teach myself how to self-publish it. I'll self-publish it. And I put it out there. And once it's out there, when people know about it, then I'll generate enough interest and enough money for them people for them to come to me. And then I'll make my own movie. Fast forward, you know, for for uh, uh, four years and I'm still making the comics, you know, and, uh, you know, this is like a few years ago. I'm still making the comics, but then I'm realizing um, okay, uh, Hollywood did contact me a few times. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be. They wanted to acquire it. That's not what I wanted. Okay, so 
I technically achieved what I wanted to achieve, but it wasn't what I wanted to do. So now what? All right. So I, I so I did the same exercise again. What can I do? What can I not do? And I realized, you know what? I got this far. Let me teach myself how to make a movie. Okay. And uh, and I said, well, well, I'm not going to do live action because there's just so much that goes into it. And, you know, to live action. What about animation? Okay. You can teach yourself animation, but I want to be taken seriously. You know, I want to be photorealistic. So that's why I really had to apply myself and learning how to create something in uh, that has the same dramatic weight that you get from like a live action drama from Game of Thrones or Lord of the Rings or Star Wars, something like that. I want something that has that same gravitas to it because um, if I can achieve that on a fraction of the budget, then, you know, the game's over, man. It's, mm-hmm. it's done. You know, like it just... Uh, like all, all I have to do is show other, other show the brothers and sisters how to do that, and we can revolutionize this industry. We don't need Hollywood. You know, mm. we can just do it. We can. I don't care how to put it on YouTube or make our own streaming service. There are so many different ways to get it out there, but you have to get it done. Yeah, and that's that's my philosophy. That's what I'm doing right now. I'm beautiful, beautiful. So speaking of getting it done, you told us that we should be able to see the trailer for Johansi uh, in September. September, yeah. In September, and then you wanted to tell me about. A TV show for the Pact? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Just dropped the news. Uh, man, you're on the ball, right? Yeah, yeah. Like we, we so we, we we dropped the news uh, a couple of days ago, and I was not expecting that um, that much. Of it. it was so relieving and, and gratifying to get the, like this huge response from people. Because for, I'll be honest, for a while I thought because I stepped away from the Pact about you know like a year and a half ago, or probably more than that, maybe two years ago. Um, to move on to other things because I just didn't feel like, um, but make it comic book is a lot of work. Mm-hmm. And I honestly enough, this may sound really, uh, really weird. Making an animated movie, in my opinion, from my experience is much easier than making a comic book. Oh, really? Okay. Own. Yeah. Most people don't think about it. as someone that's been doing both. I can honestly say that it is much harder making a comic book. Um, and that's the reason why, you know, the, the, the price tag for indie comic books and, you know, the, 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 you know, people not taking it seriously or people, you know, like each other price. No, trust me. It's not, it's not worth it. Mm. It's not worth it because these books are far more valuable than you realize. Mm-hmm. I'm not talking about, you know, like the, you know, the funny pages, you know, like, you know, that you see, or, or, you know, like so, some of like these amateur things. I mean, if you see quality work, that means a ton of work went into that. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is really hard stuff. An animated movie is a little bit different, you know, and that's the reason why I jumped over, you know, going back to why I crossed over because I felt like I had to come to a point where I realized it's taking too long to put this out. I have a massive story in my head. I need to find a better medium. I need to switch. And that was mm-hmm. when I decided, okay, you know what? It's time to make the, the, the TV series. So I wrapped up the comic book and I moved there over the production of the TV series. And I started secretly pre-production on that about a few months ago, about three or four months ago. Okay. I didn't tell anyone about it. It was just me, my computer, you know, and just, you know, just, just uh, doing some stuff. And I fell in love again, man, because wow. I was like, damn, I miss this world so much. I missed it. I really did. I love, I love Yohanse. It's something about the pack, you know, the first thing I went in there because so mm-hmm. much, because I put so much detail into that world that I feel like I can just walk into it and just hang out. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. so we writing the script again and then doing the concept art and everything. And then I did the first renders. When the first render came back, I'm like, oh, I did it. This actually looks realistic. Okay, this can actually work. And you know, the like, images and, 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 you that, said that, you that, put that was, it in yeah. Instagram? Uh, Instagram, Twitter, uh, Facebook, um, uh, you know, everywhere that I have, I, I put it out there. And it's been, you know, like going crazy. Everyone, everyone liked it. I got some people saying, "So what? Wait, um, uh, so I, like, I'm glad that you got like an actor who looks just like Kenty." And I'm like, you know, it's not an actor, right? That's CGI. Like what? Like the crazy. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. that that moment right there, I'm like, okay, I achieved. It. I did it. That yeah. was success because I was so nervous. Because when you're trying to do something photorealistic, there's like there's a so there's something that they call the uncanny valley, and um, it is you can have something that's like 98 percent realistic. But that 2% is just enough to throw your eye off that it just feels unsettling. Hmm. Okay. It doesn't, so what you, your best thing you can hope for, you know, something photorealistic isn't even necessarily to trick somebody. If you trick someone, that's even, that, that, that's even better. But even if you're not tricking someone, at least have it to where it's not unsettling. To where they're like, okay, I can appreciate all the work that went to the realism. And I know it's not entirely real, but I can appreciate that level of, of seriousness, that love texture and depth to it. Okay. And either one of those is fine. And I've been getting both responses. So that's been really relieving to do that, you know. So 
I just so so he dropped that. Um, as far as the news, uh, you know, more details into it. Um, so people keep asking, so where's it going to go? Like, who's going to be distributing it yet? That hasn't been decided yet. And the reason why I was very adamant about not deciding that yet is because um, I want the so so uh, the production is separate from the from the, from the distribution. We're going to finish production first because we have everything that we need to actually to put together, and it's coming along beautifully. Uh, right now, there's a small hiatus this month because we're just really focusing on wrapping up the Yonsei trailer. Um, and then September, we jump right back into the production, full production of the pack, you know, 100%, you know, guns blazing. We have a lot of our, our assets that are already made. So in, in animation, assets are like your models, you know, like your props, your characters and everything. So a lot of that's already been made. So the, the pre-production was very productive, no pun intended. Um, so that means that in September, we can just immediately jump straight into, into, into shooting and photography and really not lose any, any time. And then once we're done with that, once we have that, we have this complete series that's been done the way that I want it to be done and not by the way that some corporate studio wants to be done. Then we can, then we can decide where we want to distribute it. You know, if uh, a big, uh, a big distribution chain like Netflix wants to, wants to, uh, to buy it, then, Hey, that's great. If, um, if, if, no, if, if we wanted to diffuse ourselves and just give it to the masses, we can do that. You know, I like having that liberty. I like having that control over my product and who I, you know, I give it to. It's not going to stay, you know, like in some vault somewhere until they're ready to, you know, to, to, to leave it out there. Um, and then all my work is gone. Or more importantly, some producer is not going to come and take it and chop it up, you mm -hmm. know, and make their own, you know, like politically correct version, if you will, um, you know, and recut certain things. I mean, we see the, you, you see what everything is going on with this uh, Snyder cut for the for the DC you know Justice League mm -hmm. I mean who, who would have thought that just another another director's cut could make a huge difference mm -hmm. you know and th that's the thing with movies so I don't I don't feel like getting into all that you know I don't, I don't feel like 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 getting my hands messy with that I rather just uh, so I've surrounded myself with um I'm collaborating with some very talented people that I'm very excited about um we uh so I I um I, I recently got in touch with uh um, the uh, the African Martial Arts uh, Association uh, Hama and they, uh, they, they, no, they this is a um, they, uh, one of the founders uh, Demon Stith is uh, in my opinion probably one of the most accomplished African martial artists that I've ever I've ever seen. You can go to his channel and see, and he has an intense knowledge of a variety of different African weapons and the martial arts that go along with it. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another thing that I was really kind of let down in Black Panther. I hope they, they kind of correct it in the second one is show more African martial arts. We don't need, we don't need to keep seeing, you know, the Black Widow spinning head kick the thing, you know, or the Avengers and all that. We have our own martial arts. Show that. It's not all Kung Fu and, you know, and, and uh, you know, and, and, and Taekwondo and all that. Like, we have our own martial arts that are just as effective and varying. And so that was very important to me that, it's one thing when you're drawing the poses on a comic book, but if I'm going to do an animation, like, okay, I need to get some professionals now. Okay. I need to get some people that really know their stuff to develop actual martial arts. Not that they're not only based off of African martial arts, but are unique to the pack that are unique to your These are things that they, that, uh, that they, um, that were developed specifically for the series. So just so, let me interrupt uh, yeah. here. Just so I'm clear, yeah, yeah, yeah. you're going to use fight choreographers in your animation. Oh yeah, yeah. No, this, we're doing, we're doing, we're doing, yeah. No, so let me show you how it goes. So uh, basically, you have uh, now because the animation you saw, none of that was motion capture, by the way. That's all traditional animation. Okay. And I showed you. I showed you a clip of, of the Yahansi trailer. Uh -huh. All that's real, just, just normal animation. Okay. Um, and the reason why is because some people say, well, because it's really big now for people to use motion capture. I feel that motion capture isn't where it needs to be yet for it to be as fluid as perfect animation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's quicker, but you can kind of see it when it's when it's done. It's still kind of clunky. Um, so, you know, in, in big movies, what, usually what they'll do is that, even on video games, they'll have like an actor come in and, you know, in some like gimpy suit and they'll put like the, the dots on them and they'll do the action and they'll do the fight scenes and they'll capture the action and they'll try and clean it up, you know, like in post and then put that to the character. Um, that works to a degree but I can always tell when someone's doing that. So what I decided to do is just go go old school, you know, like where uh, you're just looking at the you're 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 looking at the video, okay? You're looking at like a and you're letting them see the choreography all the way through from beginning to end, 
and you're you're stopping it, you're slowing it down, your 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 mind is logically building the fight as mm-hmm. an animator on how to do it. And then you go in and you build it from scratch. The results are far superior than anything. Yeah, they take more time, but there's some things you just can't fake, you know? Mm-hmm. Certain certain anticipation of movements, the shape of a body when it when it when it goes. So that so what that allows me to do is for me to turn to Demond and his and his guys and say you know go wild go crazy do whatever you want you know like uh, this is these are the weapons that are in the scene this is what's gonna happen you know go crazy and see the stuff so they they with, act it out and it. send you the film clip and, and then you yeah, animate so, it so so there's several, so what Demond is doing is it takes several steps so there are a variety of different weapons in Yohanse and the pack mm-hmm. and these weapons are fantasy versions of real African weapons okay. In real life, those African weapons are attached to specific African martial arts, all of which Daman knows. Mm. So he can. So what he has to do is is now take these fantasy weapons and create new martial arts to go along with them. And once he's created those martial arts, kind of like a guidebook of how to use that, then he can choreograph a fight using those based off that. So the levels that go into this, and then he puts that fight out. I take that fight, I animate it. And you know that that's that. So that's so, the kind of collaboration that we're so, with. It's so here, here's the, the thing. Is, man. Here's the thing is crazy, right? <clears throat> I, I saw an interview years ago where in the '90s, Wesley Snipes, one of our favorite action uh, actors, wanted to do Blade. I'm sorry, I wanted to do um, Black Panther. Yeah. And uh, you know he was negotiating with Marvel or whatever, and and the interview he was saying he developed like his own martial art fighting form for the movie, but it got squashed or whatever. And so they gave him blade. Yeah. Get out of face. Take this kind of thing. We know, you know, that was the first Marvel movie that made any money. So to hear you say that, it's almost like the universe is like, shit, that door was closed. Let me try Paul, you know, <laughs> you know kind of a thing. That's beautiful, man. That's beautiful. Who else, who else are you working with in terms of getting this project done? Okay, so um, at this stage, uh, so I'm working usually with the same people okay. for both projects. Um, uh, some people are unique to some projects. We're still in talks with them. So the ones that we're in talks with, I can't disclose yet until, you know, the ink is dried, so to speak. Okay. Um, but the ones I can talk about, I am working with a terrific composer named uh, Joel Santos. Uh, he's, uh, uh, he, he, he's, he's working on Johanse. And he's been with the project since day one. Like, he's been attached to it. He's been very loyal, very patient, because we've gone this this uh, for a minute. Johansson was in production hell because for a minute there were, were, were um it were I was like okay this is not at all what I want. I have to go back to the drawing board and we it set it, it, it set the whole production back a whole year and a half. That's why it's been so long because at one point we did like I was close to to finish. I'm like this is not what I want. This is this is horrible. This is not. I, I'm I'm a perfectionist so. I was willing to scrap everything and start from scratch and delay it for another year if it meant. And, you know, we lost some people on the way uh, that said, okay, you know, I, I got to work on something else. But Joel's been there since day one, and he's a terrific composer. Um, he he uh, he really understands the different blends that you would need for a score for something as unique as Yohanse. Okay. For instance, like there are elements of like synthwave in there and, 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 you know, and, and like John Williams, you know, like classic scores or, you know, just like he, he gets space opera, but he also gets that kind of grittier Blade Runner feel that you will need. But he's also very open and accessible to the African influence as well. So um, overall, man, I could not, I could not be worked with a better group of people um you know like for that and then as far as voices are concerned again those are the main ones i can't divulge yet until the ink is dry because i know everyone's like oh, who's gonna voice who's gonna voice that but um uh yeah well, there's a few people that we're looking that we're looking at we do need to do another round of casting calls in september though mainly for the pack okay um but uh for the pack it's interesting because um Yohansi is a little more international as far as um because you know the but the diaspora is you know all over the world so Yohansi is a celebration of that even though it has its roots in africa it's really for anyone from the diaspora not even, even beyond the diaspora anyone you know black or whatever can tap in there you know it's a celebration of of african culture and where african culture could go in the future that's Johanse. the pack is an homage to our ancient african culture so even though it's fantasy there's a lot of authenticity that goes in there so what that means is that the accents need to be you know pretty regional as well 
So I know there's like I remember like some people had a debate like whether or not wait so are is Kenzie are Kenzie they're gonna have like a British accent or or an American accent or an African accent. Um, they're they're gonna have uh, an an East African accent uh, specifically for them. Uh, the same thing with the Egyptians also. Um, and then uh, a few of the, the it, it's interesting like the the different accents that we're gonna because Africa is a very diverse place. And these even though these are fantasy you know kingdoms and and, and characters. I want to feel like this, like they're uh, they're coming from non-Western languages. You know, these are to get get the other other feeling of authenticity that goes on to it. But yeah, I remember so, um, yeah. watching tons of reviews of. We keep going to Black Panther. Tons of reviews on yeah, Black yeah. Panther, and some of the complaints from my brothers and sisters over on the motherland was saying, "Pick an accent and stick with it." They were saying that they were different oh, kinds okay. of African <laughs> accents and full. African accents, and oh, I can't, man. I can't pick it up. You know what I mean? All I heard was the click. You know what I mean? <laughs> I was like, oh, that's that's <laughs> authentic. You know what I mean? So it's funny that you mentioned that you're trying to stay away from that. Is that what you're trying to say? You know? Uh, oh, oh, for sure. I'm definitely oh, oh, oh. so I'm I'm definitely staying away from that for your haunts day. Okay. Uh, for the pack, um, I want to hire people that understand the accent. Okay. If you're um, if you don't get the accent down. Uh, that's a huge part of that's a huge part of the part. I don't want any kind of like faux halfway like mid Atlantic. And you African say accent. East Africa, right? Because yeah, yeah. So because the 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 the, the part of um, so the world that the pack takes place in is my own fictional version of Africa called Aya. So people, mm -hmm. the, the fans know that. And the part of Aya that this takes in very much like in the real world is Eastern Aya. So that's that that'll be where. You know, like modern day Egypt, Sudan, you know, Ethiopia, those those general areas. Um, so the Nubians would be in that general area. They would have that type of they would have those type of accents, you know. But it's not it's um it's interesting because we're gonna be working with a dialect coach to kind of like uh corner the accent because it's another thing too is is creating the right accent. Because at the end of the day, this is still fantasy. So mm -hmm. There, are the you know, the building bricks for it are gonna be the, the DNA is gonna be authentic. But we're going to build a, a fictional house. We're going to build something with it that works for the universe, that feels authentic, that doesn't feel forced. Because, I mean, I love Forrest Whitaker, man. But, God, that accent. I was oh, going to say Jill Scott and uh, I think it was like First Lady's oh, Detective Agency. Oh, well, yeah, or, she was or, 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 yeah, or Terrence Howard as Mandela. I'm like, oh, yeah, no. Yeah. <laughs> right, come on, y'all. I'm sorry, oh, Africa. Dude. It's not our fault. We didn't do it. You know what I mean? The white folks. <laughs> They, we they cast it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. And, and it's funny because um, uh, I was talking to some African friends, and they're not really getting mad with it. With it. They just laugh and they're like, they're like, oh man, like you, uh, you say you Americans, man, you, uh, you, say, you say you, you really think we, so we you really think we talk like monkeys sometimes, like no, oh, wow. but like, uh, but, but, but and and that made me feel bad because I'm, I'm like, wait, is that what you're getting from these bad accents? I mean, like. Yeah, I didn't realize the accents were that bad. But, mm, yeah. uh, I but am no, excited. They're, 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 they're saying, look, like, just, you know, learn the accents right. You know? I am excited about um, the opportunities for voiceover that all of the animation uh, producers like yourself are going to be uh, creating. Because, um, you know, it's a, it's a small, you know, uh, it's a small uh, set of opportunities for black voices. When I That's talked true. to uh, uh, beautiful sister um, Andrea, she got married, so her last name changed. But um, when I talked to uh, Andrea, uh, not now, now it's, it used to be Daniels, she talked about the black scent. Now that was an African American accent kind of yeah. a thing. And uh, a couple of my animation, my favorite animes, you know, they might have a black or like a African or whatever. And it's just a white girl voicing it. And you can tell, you know what I mean? Because it has that funky. So the fact that you're giving that much attention to detail and you're going to be given opportunities for, for folk to do that. I think that's beautiful. Um, well, all right. Yeah, so we yeah, talked yeah. about. Oh, 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 one more thing to say about that, actually. Uh, and this is very important to me is that we're going to be casting all around the world for it. Because one of the cool things in a post-COVID world and also in this, if I can say if there's anything cool about a post-COVID world, is that we're much more virtual now. Um, there, there are good, there are pluses and cons of that. You know, there are pros, there are pros and cons of like uh, good, good things and bad things that go along with it. 
one of the good things I would say is that we're not necessarily bound geographically anymore. So that means that I can cast someone in Tanzania, you know, as long as they have the right sound equipment to record it, you know, I can have a sound guy over here that can take that performance and we can, you know, work as production. So you're not necessarily bound to just work with the people that are literally around you, you know, because most, because chances are we're not going to be in the same sound booth together anyway. It'll be great, but we're going to have to be creative, you know, with certain things. So that means that um, you get whoever is ready for the job. You know, like there, there are certain people that don't get certain opportunities because of where they are geographically or because Hollywood would never really consider, you know, the accent. I want a variety of opportunities for people. I, I mean, uh, Game of Thrones was like, is, is like the, a treasure trove of work for any actor that, that's, that's within the, the, the English speaking world, particularly, uh, particularly in the UK. There's a ton of different accents in the UK alone and every single one of them is in Game of Thrones. Mm -hmm. So if you have an accent, then okay, they might have something for you. I want that same level of opportunity. If they can do that for, 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 uh, for an island, then I'm pretty sure they can do that for the diaspora, mm -hmm. you know? So that's, th th that's what I hope I'm going to do, you know? And, and uh, I do have another top secret project. It was not top secret so much anymore, but um, it's called Bayala, which is, uh, that's going to be my first anime. Isn't and that the that book that, was, that just reviewed the prequel a couple weeks ago? Yeah, you yeah, go to yeah, John Vassell, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, dot com. You can see the the, the preview. Exactly. But, hey, oh, by the way, uh, you know, I'm glad you plugged that in there because your reviews. Thank you so much, man. Cool. I really got to say, you you knocked off the ball. Uh, it, it, like you knocked the park with that. Like they've really. Um, I got some people that uh, like when, when I would share like uh, my stuff, and people were like, wait, what's this? And someone would share like a, a Jonathan Soul review, and I say, yeah, this tells you everything you did. I'm like, okay, all right, that's my brother. He knew, <laughs> he got it. Let's <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you got yeah. it. So yeah, I, I appreciate it, man. I appreciate the love. No problem. Uh, but yeah, so but, but Viola is um, is uh, inspired um, from um, uh, my West Indian heritage, so by the Caribbean. Um, so it's not just Afro influences. You know, there's a little bit of Chinese in there and European. You know, and and uh, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, and, and, and indigenous uh, indigenous American. You know, in Spanish too. Like there's all the different blends in there, and it's more of a celebration of Caribbean culture. But it has that anime mecha type flair to it. You know the the bright colors and it's going to be more like a 2d style so i'm really excited to reveal that it's good um, that's good the, that's uh yeah as a matter of fact that if i can segue into something else if you don't mm -hmm. mind um that's this is probably the first time i'm going to be announcing this uh but me and a, a close uh, business partner of mine are in the process of trying to put together uh in an, an afro fantasy con uh oh. like our own con next year it's going to be really big uh, it's more like a showcase of all the biggest names in, in the indie world for Afro fantasy. Okay. And we're going to have panels. We're going to have showcases. We're going to have a Hall H. We're going to have a fashion show. It's good. There's a lot. So we were in talks with, with the, you know, some very, very talented cats across the globe uh, to be, be involved in it. And uh, one of those things is one of the, so one of the, uh, the highlights that shows us going to be the Midas Monkey Expo. This is something that I talked about, you know, with, with times before, but this the time is going to be really big, where it's basically going to be me unveiling um, for the first time, you know, all these projects that I've been working on, uh, just in animation alone now. And for the for a few for the lucky people that buy the tickets, they get to see, you know, some exclusive like footage, like like actual like whole episodes or or something, you know, like for the first time. For other people, they get to see a trailer, and the stuff will be out there soon, but. That's going to be unveiled then, and a few other stuff that's even more top secret I can talk about. But wow, um, there's man. just like a whole pipeline. I've been working, man. There's a whole mm -hmm. pipeline mm -hmm. of stuff that's that's ready to come out, and that's why I really got to thank people for um, for uh, for their support, you know, through these years. Like it's uh, the, the, like, there's been some, just like anything indies have been some tough times, been some great times, but the fact that I still have. Um, a dedicated group of people that support what I'm doing, that are excited for it. I cannot thank you guys enough. Like really, I mean, it's it's much more than I deserve. That's for sure. So I really appreciate. I, it. I think the the quality and the heart and soul that you put in your project kind of garnered, you know, uh, that kind of support. That. You know, like attracts like kind of a thing. I appreciate that. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, and, yeah, yeah. And, and you know what, too? Like, I don't think enough credit goes to what goes into being a fan. You know, like it's not just. Like I said, like you like some, there's actually some work that goes into it. You know, like I, I, I've, I'm like, sometimes I will go on Facebook and I'll see some of the people that are commenting on it. I'm like, I remember that name from like three or four years ago. Like that, that's how long you've been with this. 
like I'll, I'll, I'll like I'll, I'll these things is like I'll notice these things, you know, and mm-hmm. it makes a huge difference when, when when you see this kind of stuff because you realize that there is loyalty. There, there's there's actual um, there, there's actual campaign work going on. People are are sharing it with other people. They're 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 uh, you know like they're spreading because it means that much to them. And that to me is when you know that validates when I said that it doesn't just belong to me anymore, mm-hmm. and that belongs to these people because um, it, it humbles you. You can't get cocky because they're not here for you. <laughs> They're, 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 they're here for what this means, this thing that's bigger than us. Mm-hmm. And I mm-hmm. think that that kind of like brings you down as a human being and realize that, yeah, I'm just one piece of the puzzle. And I like that. You know, it, it's you can't get a big head with this, you know, like it's uh, because whenever you do, that's when that's when you get crappy content, because mm-hmm. uh, when you're too self involved and involved in your own self and you're thinking, OK, no, this is my idea. This is, this, you know, everyone's coming to see me. Um, you don't get to, you don't know how to separate the good from the bad mm-hmm. and before you know it all your ideas turn bad because no one's telling you these are bad ideas anymore you're not you're not listening to that anymore you know you're you're it's entertaining to you because you're in your head sure. but, but you're not making it for the audience anymore you're making it for yourself mm-hmm. and that's fine if you understood that but if you're making it for yourself and you're thinking you make it for the audience you have a problem with it. so before you know? we wrap up I want to ask you a question as a fan so give yeah. me your thoughts on the idea of done is better than perfect mm. you know good question. I'm putting the pressure on the brother right now okay all right you're in the hot seat right now okay all right, yeah. all right, um hmm because i'd rather see what you got you know what i mean in terms of you know then you you know you know what I'm saying? I re- done okay, is better right, than right. perfect. So, 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 all right. So here's Bam. my response. Here's... You, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. All right. So here's my response. Okay. okay. Um. Uh. For me, you know me. I'm a, I'm a perfectionist. Anyone that knows me knows I'm a perfectionist. Like I said, I will. Uh, but you uh, mellowing in your in your maturity though, right? You mellowing out. You know what I mean? Starting to. Because most to, most of the, most of your favorite the, the, bands sounded better before they got signed by a label. You know what I'm saying? That, that grimy exactly. sound yeah, was yeah, the yeah. shit. You know what I mean? Well, well, I mean, they were they were hungry back then. That's right, right, right. Man. The hunger. There you they go. Were, okay. They were hungry. You know, right. when when you're fed, you're like, okay, man, let's do this. You know, I need to get back to this party or not. Come on, man. Let's just let's, let's, let's wrap this up. Let's go. <laughs> but uh, funny enough, um, um, I mean, I'm not as much perfectionist as I was. No, actually, let me rephrase that. No, I'm still I'm still uh, like there's, uh, in some cases I'm even more so. Mm. But the interesting thing, so for instance. Before the show started off air, I gave you like a, a small little peak at the Yahansi trailer. Which was fucking right. awesome. <laughs> Apart my Thank language. You. Yeah, probably. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I showed you that. Now, that's a rough cut. That's not even though that you need to be done. So I guess I should be asking you the question, is done better than perfect? Because if you say done better than perfect, that means I can just put that out there and I'm like, okay, well, here's your trailer. But that wouldn't work, would it? You know, you know what I'm saying? I gotta be honest with you. I would consider that a teaser rather than a trailer. But uh, you slap a little music on that and and a couple of a couple of uh, voices, and it's a meal. But <laughs> see, because see, you, uh, you gotta remember, you you weren't see, the first, not, that, 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 but you wanted the like, first that's not a meal. to to come out there. So and you gotta remember, we still it's it's still um uh, how can I say this? It's not a lot out there right now. Like, okay, the, the stuff that I'm seeing behind the scenes, none of it is is space opera. None of it is on that level. So if you let's just say you thought it out there tomorrow, right? Right. right. It's nothing out there, out there that I'm aware of, and I, I dig pretty deep. I don't know everything. It's nothing out there like that. I'm trying to tell you. If I you mean, was I, on I, an I, action I, tip or a horror I, 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 tip, I'd say somebody else. But right now, it's nobody out there like that. Well, I mean, I really appreciate that. And but here's the thing, too: I'm running against the clock, too. Okay. You know, um, I, I I can guarantee you right now they're going to take Black Panther to space in number two. I guarantee you they're going to make I'm, Black I'm, Panther. I, I, know, game I know. I know. I know uh, and they're going to uh, do it. They're, 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 they're going to take the, the brother to space. I already know. Black it. Panther so, going to make Black Panther gay. The leopard god is going to be white. <laughs> <laughs> They're gonna get all that shit. Trouble. Stop, all that shit. No, 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 I'm. I might I'm, not even is, see Black Panther too. It's entirely know. Jonathan Soul, y'all. I'm not. <laughs> I do not endorse anything that he's just saying. I, I, I neither object nor 
nor endorse it. I'm just a oh, silent. Oh, uh, man. <laughs> the views and opinions expressed by Jonathan Soul are those of the yeah, host and not the guests. I got you. I want you. I want you. <laughs> but that's yeah, yeah. that's no, 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 why no, no, no. with the indie. I get what you're saying, get what you, you're saying though. You guys don't have as much of so many axes to grind. You want to tell a story from from a perspective that you feel is important. And I can meet you there. I can get with you on that. Right. And Hollywood. Right. Is, uh, well, all right. So I, I, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I'll make a deal with you. Okay. Give me, give me, give me one month. Like we said, because you said we're gonna drop in September. Give me one month. If I'm not done by September, I'll, I'll, I'll wrap up and polish off what I have and put it out regardless. You're That'd right, be beautiful. Because, um, because, because I think there's a middle ground. I think it's interesting that you, I'm very happy about this question because there is a middle ground. If you keep polishing that stone, you know. It's one. Th it, it's it's a good thing to want to get it perfect. It's a good thing to want to get out there. You wait too long, you might miss that train too. So I'm kind of like walking like that thin line right now, where I'm very blessed. I still have people that are still interested in it because I had the Kickstarter, the Indiegogo for this, you know, a couple of years ago. It's been it's been it's been a couple of years, you know. I'm I'm, I'm I, I acknowledge that, but and I and, and I'm glad that people are still interested in it. At the same time, I don't want to. I don't want to abuse that. I don't want to take that for granted, you know. So, um, right, right now, the way it's looking right now, because I have a lot of scattered footage, you know. It's a question more of like editing it and putting it together. Um, if we get it done this month, that's great. If not, then I'll take what I have and put it out there. Because I mean, you guys have been very patient, more than patient, and you know, it's time we put something out there. You know, yeah. we, we need because uh, not it's not it's not it's not just it's not just like for for like I need this too. Um, you know, it's not like I'm, I know it sounds pretty, you know, conceited to say that I'm a fan of my own thing, but that's the nature of the black condition right now. We're so starved for this stuff mm -hmm. that even the people creating it are hungry. Mm -hmm. You know, like we, 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 just like you said, what do we have out there as far as like a black Star Wars? We don't get that. The closest thing we got was Donald Glover as Lando, and I loved him, but I mean, hey, I mean, they. Uh, I mean, they have a relationship with the robot. I don't know what I think about that, but whatever. Yeah, that's... Like I said, brother, they're going to make <laughs> <laughs> what I just say. So, so, okay, good. So, so on a perfect day, what's today? Uh, the 23rd of July. So August. So you saying like September ish first week, second week. Yeah. So, um, so just like I said, we're still in talks right now with Dragon Con. Okay. Um, and if, um, if, uh, so if everything goes to plan with Dragon Con, then we're definitely dropping it at Dragon Con. Excellent. Uh, and Dragon Con is the first week of September. And if things go really to plan, we should have our own panel as well, which allows me to show the behind the scenes stuff, including like how we made it. And also interviews with the, with the crew, like interviews with the choreographer and the composer. And, you know, and showing like, you know, like the, the behind the scenes of, you know, like the animation and the concept art, you know, that goes into building this thing and really talking and getting into that. So hopefully, you know, Dragon Con is, uh, is open to that. Uh, if they are, I mean, then, hey, th th that's, th that's the green light right there. But, uh, you know, in the unlikely event that that doesn't happen, it's still going to be released at that time. At the latest is going to be September, if not before then. You know, beautiful, but beautiful, it's, beautiful. Uh, it's definitely gonna, it's gonna have to be done before the end of August anyway. And okay. So like so, I, mean, I might be able to slip you a personal a personal look see you know a week be before everybody else, but we'll see. That be great. I, I think I think your fans deserve at least a teaser. You know, I think your fans. You know what? At least I, a teaser. I'm, I'm starting to consider that now because but but all right. So wait, you think that it's not going to diminish? It's not going to diminish the impact because folk have been with you for three years. You're right. You're right. So just feel okay, a little but something. that's so short, though. You know, like the what I showed you was really short. And you think that's enough for a the teaser? Black Panther teaser, if I recall, what's it like a minute and twenty five seconds? Bump, 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 bump. That's all we saw him ju jumping around in the dog. We couldn't even see shit. You know what I mean? And motherfuckers okay, was right crying right. on YouTube, yo. I was like, oh my god, that's how hungry we was for that content. Black Panther? I never okay. bought a Black Panther comic in my life. <laughs> I was reading Thor, yo. You know what I'm saying? So we was uh, so I'm not trying, I'm just trying to say that Okay, so it so may be enough. I think a okay. I think a teaser may be enough. It's up to you. You got enough pressure on you with with I your mean, schedule, you're not lie. And your you're vendors really, and everything. You planted something there. 
And just now it's just not meditate on it. If it grow, it grow. If it don't, you know, I mean, you're going to release it anyway, but I'm just saying. A little tease. You know what? Just a little I'm, tease. I'm, I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, when we go off air, I'll give you my response. Once we go All off right. air, I'll say my response. Yo, okay? You'll be like, hell. No, just wait. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with so, you, man? <laughs> so, so. I know, right? I know. So tell the folks how they can uh, how they can support you, reach out to you, follow you on social media, uh, all that good stuff. Okay, so um, uh, the big three: Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. The main ones: Facebook. Go to Midas. Go, go, uh, you can follow us uh, at Midas Monkey. That's Midas, uh, and then Monkey spell M O N K E E. Um, the the same thing for Instagram, and the same thing for for for, for Twitter as well. Um, on Facebook, however, if you just specifically want your hot seat content, you can, we have our own your hot seat page. If you, if you specifically want the pack content, we also have uh, the the pack page. But for the pack, it's um, at the pack uh, series because um, uh, I guess the pack was was taken. So the, the just type in the pack series on uh, Facebook, and you'll get all the information there. But if you want to get all of the all the stuff, just go to minus monkey on our Facebook page, and we we try to keep everything up to date. With that, but um, yeah, and then our website minusmonkey.com is where you can you can buy all of our uh, the comic books are still available. Um, we still have uh, printed copies of the pack. We're waiting for uh, once this COVID thing uh, uh, lightens up. We're waiting to restock for the collected edition of the Yohansi Saga. But right now we do have the first the first issue of Yohansi in print. And for all of our books, we have them digitally, so you can get them all digitally. But as far as print is concerned, because you know some people still like you know the, the physical, um, you know, because I, I I know I know how you are too. You need uh, you need to hold like on the paper, bro. Yeah. yeah, 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 oh yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, you you can get all that directly from the website, and you know we we ship uh we ship all all over the world. Fantastic, brother Paul. It's been an honor to have you back on the program. Likewise, man. I, I, I'm definitely going to make sure that it's not too long before next time because it's been way too long since I've been here. Fantastic. No, I, I, can't, I, I, I can't wait to have, for you to have me back, man. Fantastic. And let's see. Stop recording here and stop recording.